and welcome to Big Fish this week. Sorry that we weren't about last week, um, but hopefully we will be about every week now, right up until the summer holidays. Yes. And we've got lots of great things for you again this week, as always. Yes, we have a craft and a song and a game and a story. It is going to be lots and lots of fun. Oh, and we also have our friend Luke as well. Yes, and also Elisha is you here with us hello? as always. Right, you're going to push your glasses up, buddy? No, done Luke's down there. He's still in his bed at the moment, isn't he? We'll have to wake him up in a minute, okay? Yeah. He's sleeping, yeah. Luke's sleeping, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So, as always, we're going to start off with a bit of a warm-up or a bit of a game. So, we decided this week we're going to go back to Animal Karate that we know so many of you loved in the early weeks of the Big Fish Kids Club. So, if you weren't around back then with us, then this is how it works. Um, Becky is going to be our Animal Karate expert this week. So, in a minute, I will say, Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. And you have to choose one of three things. You have to choose either a giraffe, a crocodile, or a penguin. Okay, so once you've chosen which one is going to be, I like to choose a penguin, then you um, stick with that one. I'll then say animal karate expert, do your thing. Becky will do it. And if she picks the same as you, then you're out. You need to sit down. Um, but don't worry, because we're just going to play three rounds and we'll see who is going to be our winner at the end of three rounds. So, yes. you ready? Uh, he's on the table. You're warmed up? Yes. Right, Elisha. Elisha stood on the table at the moment. Let me, <laughs> let me just pull Elisha back off the table. Oh, come by here with me. Wait. There we go. Here we go. Okay. Right. So we will make a start. So, animal karate kids, do your thing. Hi. -ya! So choose one of those either the giraffe, the crocodile, or the penguin. So stick with what you've got. And now we're ready. Animal karate expert, do your thing. Hi. -ya! Oh, crocodile. No, okay. No. So if you were to a crocodile, then sit down where you are and you're out for the rest of the game. But if you were either the giraffe or the penguin, you're still in and you've got a chance of winning this week. So here we go. Animal karate kids, do your thing. Hiya! So choose one again. It could be the same one as last time. Might be a different one, whichever you want to choose. So stick with that now. And we'll say animal karate expert, do your thing. Hiya! Oh, a giraffe, a giraffe. So if you were a giraffe, you sit down. If you were either the crocodile or the penguin that time, then you're into the final round. You could be one of our winners this week. And you can always get your grown-up to let us know through our Facebook page or messaging us in some other way. And we'll give you a shout-out next week as one of our winners. So, for the last round, you ready? Here we go. Animal Karate Kids, do your thing. hi -ya! So choose whichever one you wanted. The giraffe, the crocodile or the penguin. Stick with what you've got now. Don't change your mind. Okay, so here we go. Animal Karate Expert, do your thing. hi -ya! Oh, a crocodile, crocodile, crocodile. So, if you had a crocodile, then you were out in that final round. If you were a giraffe or a penguin, then well then, you are one of our winners this week. Well done. Fantastic. And as we said, let us know, um, and we'll give you a shout out next week as one of our winners. Now, as always at this point, Becky is going to give you a little reminder about this week's craft. So, yes. here we go. For the craft this week, you will need a pen, a pair of scissors, some tape. A lollipop stick or some card, that kind of thing, um, and some coloured paper as well. Okay, and is that all they need? Yeah, I think that's it this week. That's it. Excellent. Okay, fine. Hello. So, Hello. so now, what we're going to do now, that's just for later on, so you've got a chance to get it ready during the thing if you didn't see our Facebook post on Tuesday, but now we're going to sing a song, a great song. I know it's Elisha's favourite song, and it's one of my favourite songs as well, Jesus Superhero. So, sing as best you can, and do the best actions you can. Here you go. Turned all the water into wine Who told his friends where to fish so they could fill their nets? He even then walked on the water But didn't even get his feet wet Splash! Jesus Superhero Jesus Superhero Jesus Superhero The only one who can save the world Out of just a bit of fish and bread mm. Healed a man even though he was already dead Ooh. Silence 
the wind and the waves for all to see Stop! And then died on the cross and came alive so that I could be free Yeah! Woo! He's Jesus Superhero Jesus Superhero Jesus Superhero The only one who can save the world Only one who can save the world And when I'm scared I know he's there for me I just call to him To come and rescue me Yeah, when I'm scared I know he's there for me Just call to him How are you doing this week? Hello, Steve. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Have, have you had a good um, Have you had a good nap, a good rest? Elisha yes. was telling us earlier that you were fast asleep. Yes, it was a very good nap. That's very good. comfortable. That's good. That's good. Carry you, is it? Carry you up here to see Luke. There we go. Right. Hello, Elisha. There we go. Okay, Luke. So, um, should we have a look at what name we're going to be um, looking at for Jesus this week? Yes, please, Steve. Okay. So, just to remind you, all through this term, we've been looking at different names of Jesus that he's called by different people in different stories. And this week, Luke, it's Rabbi. Rabbi. There's no need to be rude, Steve. What do you mean rude? I just said Rabbi. That that sounds rude, Steve. But what, what do you mean, Luke? Why does it sound rude? It sounds rude? like you're being mean, like that, that I don't blink very often or something what, like that. Look, 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 I know you don't blink very often, but I'm not saying anything about your eyes. I'm not saying rab-i. It's, it's just a name, rabbi. Oh. No, I still don't get it. Okay, well, Luke, rabbi was a special name that Jews called people out of respect. And it was a name they called to teachers and doctors and things like that. They would call them rabbi. It was a sign of respect. Oh, so so like we say sir. Yeah, so like you might call a teacher sir or somebody older sir. It's that kind of thing, a sign of respect to somebody else. Ah, so they were saying something like that to Jesus. Yeah, that's the thing. So they recognised Jesus as a teacher. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, but you see, the person that recognised Jesus as a teacher and called him rabbi in this story didn't just recognized Jesus as a teacher, but he realized that Jesus was much, much more than that. Ooh, that sounds interesting. But you're going to have to listen to the story to find out okay, what else he's talking Okay, okay. Bye! Oh, are you going already? Well, you said the story. You said about the yeah. story being good, oh, so I was going to watch the story. It's an excellent story this time. It's a bit of a strange story, a bit hard to understand, so you're going to have to listen really carefully, Luke. But I love this story and what it explains to us about what Jesus was saying. Ooh! Okay, so do you want to say bye properly and go and lie down in your bunk? Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, so. Bye, Elisha. So, as Luke heads down into his bunk, we're going to head across to our story this week that actually happens at night. So, let's go and find out what's going to happen. (laughs) 
Now, the religious leaders that were around at the same time as Jesus didn't like Jesus very much at all. They didn't like him saying that he was God here on earth. They didn't like the fact that the people were listening to him rather than listening to them. They felt the people should listen to them and do what they said, not what Jesus said. But you see, there was one of the religious leaders that thought differently. He was called Nicodemus. Now, he was sure that Jesus was actually God. And but he was a bit afraid of the others. So he waited until it was nighttime and then he went to the place where Jesus was because he had a really important question that he wanted to ask Jesus. And so he said to him, Rabbi, I know that you are a great teacher. I've heard you teaching the people many times. I know that you can do amazing miracles. And that means that you must be from God. You see, he'd probably seen Jesus heal people who were blind so they could see again. He maybe even seen Jesus heal people who couldn't walk so they could walk again. And he said, well, Jesus, I want this really, really important question. He said, Jesus, what must I do to become part of God's family? What must I do to be part of God's kingdom here on earth? And what must I do to one day get to be with God in heaven forever? Well, Jesus wanted to help him out with such an important question. So Jesus said this, truly, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot be in God's kingdom. It's a bit strange, isn't it? What did Jesus say? Unless you are born again, you cannot be in God's kingdom. Nicodemus was a bit confused. He might even scratch his head. He said, Jesus, how can I be born again? I can't go back into my mum and be born again. That would be rather strange. No, 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 said Jesus. That's not what I mean at all. And then Jesus went on to explain. Now, to explain to you what Jesus meant, I've got a great story for you today to help you to try and understand it. Now, my story for you today to help you understand what this means when Jesus says you must be born again to be part of God's kingdom. My story today is about someone called Claudia. Claudia the caterpillar. Now, Claudia loved doing what caterpillars loved doing. She loved bathing out in the sun and enjoying the time outside. She loved eating flowers and that kind of thing. But Claudia always dreamt, she always thought, she sure, surely God has something more incredible for me than this. Surely God has something much more amazing than what I've already seen. And you know, the Bible says that God has something more amazing for you and me as well. He actually wants us to have an amazing and incredible life, but we can only do that if we know him. Well, anyway, Claudia would often dream. She would often go up to one of the high sunflowers and she would look out and she would see the butterflies and she would think, oh, oh, I really wish I could fly. I wish I could go swooping and sailing around the sky. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be incredible? So one day, Claudia decided to do something about it. She went to the big tree at the bottom of the garden. She climbed right the way to the top of the big tree. She looked out at the beautiful butterfly swooping and soaring and flying through the sky. And she thought, that is going to be me as well. And so with one giant leap, Claudia jumped off and she said, I'm going to fly. Thud. Of course, it wasn't going to work. Claudia couldn't fly. She was just a caterpillar. But she still dreamt about there being more. She still dreamt about flying. And so even though she was a bit battered and bruised from her first attempt, she looked at the butterflies and she thought, I really wish I could swoop and fly and that kind of thing. Oh, she looked at them again. She thought, ah, that's what I need. I need wings. That's how the butterflies fly. I need to have wings just like a butterfly. So Claudia got two leaves, she tied them to herself. She climbed right to the top of the big tree. She stood at the top, she jumped up, she said, I'm gonna fly! Thud. Again, it didn't work out. You see, this wasn't how God had planned for things to happen for Claudia. You see, God did have an amazing plan for Claudia's life. He did want her to do and see more amazing things than she'd seen already as a caterpillar. But Claudia's problem was that she was trying to do it by herself, rather than relying on God and following the plan that God had for her life. And you know, as I said, God has an amazing and incredible plan for our lives as well. He wants to do something amazing with us, but we can't sort that by ourselves. You see, the only way that we can know the amazing plan that God has for us is actually by, well, knowing God. And the problem is we're stuck down here on earth and God's up in heaven. 
And we can't get to know God by ourselves. It isn't about us trying to do things. It isn't about us trying to be good like Claudia trying to jump off the tree. Or it isn't about us going to church like Claudia tying the leaves to herself. They might be good things to do, but by themselves they won't let us know God and the plans that he has for us. You see, because there's a problem, a problem that we can't sort out. There's a barrier that actually separates us down here on earth from God up in heaven. And that barrier is made up of something that the Bible calls sin. It's a bit of a strange word, isn't it? But it means all the things that we think that are wrong, all the things we say that are wrong, all the things we do that are wrong, and the wrong inside of us. And all of those wrong things actually separate us from God and stop us from getting to know him. But you see, because God loves us so much, he said he's done something about that barrier to sort it out, to take it away so that we can get to know him. But I'll tell you about that in a bit. Well, as I said, Claudia's problem was she'd been trying to sort things by herself. She was battered and bruised. And she still wished she could fly. She knew that that was what God wanted for her, but she didn't know how to do it. And in the end, she did what she should have done all along. She looked out at the butterflies and she said, God, I can't do this by myself. I'm sure that you want me to fly. God, will you please help me to fly? So God led Claudia up to one of the high branches on the tree. And there, God started to form a chrysalis around Claudia. Claudia perhaps started to get a bit afraid. She was thinking, this isn't gonna make me fly. This is getting me trapped. If this closes in even more, I'm gonna die. This isn't gonna be the right thing. But God said, Claudia, trust me. I know what I'm doing. You know, it's the same for us as well. It might seem strange and odd having to trust God, but actually, he knows what's best for us. He made us, he created us, and he loves us. And we need to trust him, even if what he asks us to do seems a bit strange. Well, God closed up the chrysalis around Claudia the caterpillar. What was gonna happen? She stayed in there for one day, two days, three days. In fact, she was in there for a couple of weeks. And then eventually, after a couple of weeks time, there was a bit of a rumbling, a bit of a moving, and out from the chrysalis climbed boring old, well, no, Claudia had changed. God had transformed Claudia. She was no longer a caterpillar, but now she was a beautiful butterfly. She was made to fly. But you see, in order for Claudia to become the beautiful and amazing butterfly that God wanted her to be, the old Claudia, the caterpillar, had to die in order for the new Claudia, the butterfly, to come. And you know, the Bible says it's the same for us as well. In order for the new us to come, in order for us to be born again, the old us has to die. But actually, but we don't have to die. Because you see, somebody died for us. You see, the punishment for sin is death. But instead of us having to die, someone died for us in our place to take away our sin so that we could get to know God. And that someone is, well, God himself, Jesus. You see, Jesus came down out of heaven, down to earth, lived a perfect life. And then at the end of his life, he was placed upon the cross. And there he took the punishment for the sin that you and I have committed. So that actually that barrier could be taken away. And actually if we turn and say we're sorry to Jesus and put our trust in him, then actually we could get to know God. We could become part of God's family. We could be part of his kingdom here on earth and one day get to be with him in heaven forever. You see, that's how much God loves us, that he was willing to do that for us so that we could get to know him, so that we could get to know the amazing and incredible plans that he has for our life. Well, from that day on, Claudia loved to swoop and sail and fly around the sky. And she always remembered to thank God because it was him that made it possible. Because it was when she trusted in him that she saw the amazing plan that God had for her life. And you know, when I was 12 years old, I was born again. Now, I didn't go into a chrysalis like Claudia, but actually somebody explained to me about what Jesus had done for me on that cross. And I said, Jesus, I'm really sorry for the things I've done that are wrong. Jesus, I want to live for you. And actually the Bible says that Jesus came into my life through the Holy Spirit. 
And actually, there, he cleaned me up on the inside. He took away all of those bad things, my old life, and he made me brand new. I was born again as a new and incredible person so that I could live the life that God wanted me to live. And, you know, it might seem like a long time ago when I was 12, but actually, I still tell you that it was the most amazing and incredible decision that I ever made in my whole entire life. And so I want to tell you that, you know, if you've never done that, if you haven't been born again, as Jesus says that you need to be in order to be part of his kingdom, then I encourage you to do that today. All you need to do is say, Jesus, I know that I can't sort this by myself. Jesus, I know that I can't sort out the mess of my sin and the things I've done wrong by myself. I need you. Jesus, I'm really sorry for all those things I've done that are wrong. Jesus, will you please forgive me for all of those things and help me to live for you? I want to trust in you completely and live my life the way that you want me to be. And Jesus says, if we do that, then we become part of his family. We become part of his kingdom here on earth. And one day we will get to be with him in heaven forever, which is the most amazing and incredible thing. Wow. I love that story about Nicodemus coming to visit Jesus at night and how Jesus had to explain to him what it meant to be born again. And hopefully through that story of Claudia, it's helped you to understand what Jesus means when he says that we need to be born again as well. But now it's time for us to say a prayer. So you know how we do this in the Big Fish Kids Club. We go like this, hands on shoulders, ready to go. When I say one, hands out in front of you. When I say two, like this. When I say three, close your eyes, bow your head. I'm then going to pray and we need to speak to God, but also listen to him to see what he's saying to us as well. And then I'll say amen. And I'll say four, we'll sat up nice and straight, ready to go for the next bit of the Big Fish Kids Club. So you're ready. Here we go. That's on shoulders. One. Oh, you need to be quicker than that. You need to be as quick as you can possibly be. Okay. One thing I need to... Oh, no, don't worry. I'll tell you about that later. That's right. Here we ready. One. That's good. Two. God, I thank you so, so much that even though we mess up, even though we do things that are wrong, you don't leave us cut off and separated from you. But because you love us so much, you came to die on the cross so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be saved, that we could be part of your family and one day get to be with you forever. God, I pray that you help us understand what that means. Help us know what it means to be born again. And God, if there's anybody here listening who hasn't done that, Help them to know that you are calling them today to put their trust in you so that they can be born again and be part of your family. Amen. Four. Sat up nice and straight, ready for the next bit. Because now we're going to go over to Becky, who has got an amazing and incredible craft for you this week. everyone so wasn't that a great story that steve just told about nicodemus and jesus talking and about the butterfly and how it teaches us about new life so before we go into doing our craft for today steve's going to put the memory verse up for us so that we can read what the memory verse is so it's a bit longer this week but it says this means that anyone who belongs to christ has become a new person the old life is gone, a new life has begun. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So that is our verse for this week. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so what we will be making this week is we will be making a butterfly. Now, my one by here actually hasn't come out very well. It should, should be better than this, but let's we'll see if we can do a better job this time round. So we have two sheets of coloured paper. We've got... A stick so I don't have lollipop sticks at home so I've been using card covered in parcel tape um, so you could do some sticks made out of card or that kind of thing um, or you could use a lollipop stick if you've got one at home that would be great so I've got really colorful paper um, if you want to have plain paper and to color it in that's absolutely fine as well so we are going to start with our lighter green colored one which is going to be the top bit so what we're going to do is we are going to fold it backwards and forwards to make it um, to make it crinkled like this one. So I'm going to use the my bit of cardboard or your lollipop stick so that you can make sure that they're even. So you fold it one way and you fold and then you turn it over and you fold it the 
other way. And you do that the whole way with the piece of paper. So you fold one way, and you turn it over, and then you fold the other way. Then you fold. That way. And then you fold that way. There we go. Okay, so. Once you've done that, you should have a piece of paper that looks a little bit like this. So when it's pinched in the middle, it will look like butterfly wings. So that's the one. The other one, what we're going to do. So we don't need a rectangle, we need a square. So the way that I work out how to do a square is I fold it. Yeah, very good. So if I fold it like this, then I've got a triangle. So the two triangles make a square. So what I then do is I then fold the bit that's left. I fold that back on itself and then I cut that bit off. So So then you're going to take your lollipop stick or whatever it is again and you're going to fold it. So this time I'm doing it slightly differently. I'm going from one of the corners like so just to make it look a little bit different. And then you just start folding again till it folds the entire piece of paper. doesn't matter if it's not quite straight or anything it looks good if it is but it doesn't matter if it isn't because that's not the bit you're looking at so okay so then you've got that to buy there as well so you've got the two different things so what we're going to do we're going to take some sellotape this might be a bit fiddly you might need to ask a grown-up to help you with this bit so what you do is you take some sellotape and what I've been doing is I have been cutting it a lengthways so, so So now I have two thinner bits of sellotape. So what we then do is we take. So if you want to do the folds closer together, then you can do as well. That's fine. That might mean that it's easier to do the different things we're going to do now in a minute with. Okay, Oops, sorry. Okay, so once you've put the tape around the middle, you can then squash it out a bit and then you get something that looks a little bit like that, like a bow. And then you do the same with the other one. If you're not sure where the middle is then you can fold it in half like that so you can work out where it should go So then you've got your two bits of paper like that. What you might want to do is you might want to stick them together. Okay. 
So take your sellotape. So put these down for a sec. So take your sellotape. And again, you're probably going to want to cut it down the length just so that it... Again, ask a grown-up to help you with this bit. So cut it in half. So once you've done that, starting to look a little bit more like a butterfly. Okay, so once you've done that bit, you might want to use your um, spare bit of paper and butterfly. Do you want that butterfly? So what you might want to do is you might want to draw a face for your butterfly. So I was drawing a circle. Circle, and then I was adding some antennae on on as well. Okay, once you've drawn your face, Alicia, could you go back to Daddy for a minute, please, lovely? Then you might want to ask a grown-up to cut it out for you, or you can cut it out yourself if you're confident enough. So... Right. Uh, but be careful, he's caught the oh, cable. <laughs> Sorry about that. Elisha has managed to catch my microphone cable, which is obviously attached to my face at the moment. And um, he was walking off with it. So, um, yeah. So, you cut out. Okay, so that is my little face with his two little antennae on his. You'll probably see it easier if I do that. So, and then we're going to stick the face to the stick and then the stick to the wings. Do you want this one? Uh, Elisha, that's not a very good idea, buddy. So what you guys can't see, this table has a middle shelf. Um, and Elisha is climbing through it at the moment. So he's climbing through here and out this way. <laughs> yeah, as you can see with the little head that's just appearing that end. Yes. Okay, so we've now got our face on our stick, just so you can see it a bit better. And okay, um, and don't go back through there, please. And then we're going to stick. So what the way I get this to stick on is by folding the sellotape into a little loop, and then sticking it onto the back of the stick. And then sticking the stick to the wings. So there you have it. Our butterflies, which remind us about the new life that we get when we become part of Jesus' family. And that's our craft for this week. Oh, 
Uh, okay, table's so just moved. <laughs> it's almost time for us to go, but just before we do, I think it'd be good for us just to remind people of the memory verse, because it was quite a long one this week. Yes, it was. So it says this, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. Which is fantastic news, isn't it? That actually, if we trust in God, we can become a new person, just like Claudia in the story became from a caterpillar, an old caterpillar, to a wonderful butterfly like you've been making, so we too can become all that God wants us to be when we put our trust in him. So, I hope you enjoyed this week. Yes, we do. Um, and so, do you want to tell them about some of the things that are going to be going up on the page during the week? Yes, so all? we will have our recap on Sunday. <laughs> we I will have um, our... Um, so Luke will be doing a recap for you guys on Monday. Steve will also be doing some questions for you. That will go out with the mem the story. Um, story recap on Sunday. Yep. And you'll also post the Ooh. worksheet up on yes. the description down below. And we'll put some other um, story videos up through the week as well. But yes. we hope you've enjoyed this week. Yep. And um, we look forward to seeing you again next week. So yep. bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Hehehe. <laughs>